Okay, so a hill I'm willing to die on is that this, this is a cinema camera. And well, this, this is also a cinema camera as well. Today's video, we're gonna be comparing the Sony FX6 versus the Sony FX3. Now I've had a significant time with both of these cameras. My Sony FX3 was the first Sony cinema line camera I've ever had, and the Sony FX6 was my upgrade from it, and I've been using it ever since. Today we're gonna to be going over the similarities, the differences, and which one I think is for which type of creator. And on top of that, I have a little bit of a rant for the internet, but we'll talk about it. Now, in terms of audio options, they are going to be kind of similar, but the Sony FX3 does have a leg up. Now, the Sony FX3 does have a 3.5 millimeter jack that's on the body itself, so you can use some of your more affordable microphones, especially if you don't have XLR. Now, with the top handles that are on here, you're gonna have two XLR ports on here and a 3.5 millimeter jack, and on this guy, you're actually gonna have XLR inputs as well, but you're also going to have a little hot shoe here so you could add a microphone kind of like the one that Sony already makes that's for this hot shoe. These two are going to be slightly different, and to be honest, I think the Sony FX3 wins here because I could take this off and still use audio on my camera. However, if I want any sort of high quality audio, this thing is going to be mandatory. Once I remove this, I only have the scratch track on my FX6, and it's not my most favorite thing in the world. And if you have any complaints about this top handle, mind your own damn business, because I'm not changing this thing. Now, with drastically different camera bodies, you're going to have drastically different rigging options. Now, personally for me, and a no-brainer, is I kind of find more versatility on the Sony FX3 versus the Sony FX6, mostly because it's a lot smaller. I have a bunch of different camera rigs that you guys can check out for the FX3 and the FX30. They're pretty much interchangeable, and you can check them out all over this channel. However, I do find it's a little bit more versatile with a smaller camera. But the Sony FX6 isn't actually the biggest camera in the world while stripped down. So, you are going to have a bunch of different options, and personally for me, in terms of my handheld shooting style, I do prefer the Sony FX6 because it does have a little bit more weight, and it fits my style of shooting that much more. Now, two things that the Sony FX6 is going to pull away from is that the fact that it does have SDI and it has time code built into the camera's body. Now, if you want to get an SDI connection on the FX3, well, you're not going to get one. But if you want to get time code, there is a special cable that you can get in order to do that. The Sony FX6 has them both built in, though. On top of that, it also has built-in NDs, and I think that's a giant point of contention between the mirrorless to the cinema camera line. Once you have built-in NDs, it's just a hard thing to come back from. What ends up happening is that you don't have to worry about color cast or X pattern, and it doesn't actually cost that extra piece of equipment because you already have the ND filters that are necessary. It's built into the camera, and on top of that, the Sony FX6 has an automatic ND filter, which does mean that based on the environment, it does change its exposure to accommodate for whatever the scenario that you're in, which is something the FX3 doesn't have. Now, in terms of the shooting modes between the FX3 and the FX6, they both are able to do a high quality all in intra 4K 24, 60, and 120 frames a second. You're also gonna get the ability to use 4K DCI. Now, 4K DCI doesn't work in 120 frames a second on either camera, but you can go right up to 60 frames a second if you need those extra pixels to be able to use more of your sensor. Now, one of the big things that people like to compare cameras with is going to be your image quality. Now, the Sony FX3 and the Sony FX6 have the same sensor. They're both full frame Sony sensors that are on either camera. However, when I do put a side by side and when I have been using either camera, especially at the same time, I do actually notice a little bit of a difference. The Sony FX3 kind of has a slightly crunchier look. It's kind of hard to explain, but I do find that the roll off that's on the Sony FX6 to be a little bit better. I like the colors a little bit better. And I think the reason why that's happening is because the built-in noise reduction on the Sony FX3. Now, that's not to say the image is bad by any comparable means. I think I just like the FX6 a bit more. And with a lot of cameras, there is built-in noise reduction that people aren't gigantic fans of, especially when they want to get the most filmic or cinematic image possible. Now, again, this isn't going to be something that's going to ruin your life. This isn't something that's going to be a deal breaker, but there is a slight difference, even though they have the same sensor. They're still using 4K 10-bit. They're still going to be able to use all intra. However, when we talk about some of the shooting modes and the codecs that are going to be used, the Sony FX3 actually has a long op codec that has 10 bit that's inside of it. The Sony FX6 unfortunately only has two speeds, the highest quality or the lowest quality. If you drop down to XAVC-L, you're only going to be able to use 8-bit, and if you're going up to the Sony FX6, you're probably trying to stray away from using 8-bit codecs or you just stay on a different camera entirely. However, you're only going to get the options of all intra or the XAVC-L that's not going to give you that 10-bit codec, where on the Sony FX3, you're going to get that ability to do that. Now, if you are somebody that does hate codecs in general, you're still able to use the external RAW through an Atomos Ninja 5 recorder. You're still going to get 16-bit RAW from the FX6 and the FX3 because they do have identical sensors. And if you want to see some of the comparisons or how to actually grade some of this footage, you can check that out right over here. 
Now, in terms of the low light performance and the dual base ISO that's going to be in the Sony FX3 and the Sony FX30, they're exactly the same. You're gonna get your low base ISO at 800 as long as you're shooting in Cine EI, and you're gonna get the high base ISO at 12,800 in either one of these two cameras. Now, I did do an extensive low light test between these two cameras and some of the other cameras that are available in this range, but all in all, in terms of its performance, they are pretty identical to each other. However, you are gonna have to keep in mind that the Sony FX3 still has that built-in noise reduction. So you might get a little bit of artifacting that you're not entirely crazy about, however, it's more than fixable in post. And on the Sony FX6, you could actually adjust your noise reduction or just take it out entirely in order for you to get an image that if you do have noise, you can always just clean it up in your editing program. Now, I did mention I have used both cameras as my A camera at separate points in time. The Sony FX3 was my A camera for a really long time, especially when I moved from Canon a couple of years ago, back in 2020. And over time, I got a chance to use this camera extensively. I've shot for YouTube channels with over a million subscribers. I've shot with different events. I've shot different pieces on there for brands. I've used this camera quite a lot in terms of the work that I do. And on the Sony FX6, when I jumped up to some of those features, like getting things like shutter angle, which is something that's not a gigantic deal for me, but it is something that's convenient. But getting something like ND filters and being able to control my noise reduction or just a bigger more robust system it's been something that i've actually had a benefit from both of them now the sony fx3 is a camera that you could just pick up and you can go it's versatile enough and it's great right out of the box that you don't even need the top handle to be able to get this thing working you're able to set it up in a small compact system or you're able to scale it up into a more cinema rig style in order for you to get the shots that you want to get the sony fx6 has a lot of convenience features which i feel like is a lot of the reason why people gravitate towards cinema cameras you're going to get things like your built-in nds which a lot of cameras already have and it's a great feature especially to adjust your exposure you're going to get things Things like shutter angle which essentially keeps your shutter speed in relationship to the frame rate that you're going to be using now personally for me my kind of opinion of that is that if you could do multiplication pretty decently you don't necessarily need shutter angle if you can multiply things by two you know that two times 24 is going to be 48 and if you can get as close as you can to that you're going to be in a good spot that's just my opinion however it is a convenience feature if i'm going to go from 24 to 60 to 120 frames a second or 96 i don't have to make those adjustments on the fly it just takes me a little bit less time however it's not a deal breaker also one of the things that's a really big thing is going to be client perception now i have talked about this in a different video in terms of the perception between a bigger camera and a smaller camera and on more than one occasion my client Clients actually called me out for using a smaller camera. Now that doesn't mean I'm losing gigs, however, there is a couple of gigs that I actually gained and acquired based on having a larger and more robust system. And all that comes down to this. If you're working with a client that's going to give you a little bit more budget and you're working with them consistently, then having some of those convenience features, even though the image quality is going to be really close to something that's a little bit lesser, like the FX3, then by all means, go ahead. If money is no issue, then the Sony FX6 is an amazing choice. However, if you're only buying the FX6 for image quality improvements, you're not going to find them there, at least for the price point that it's going to be. The FX6 is almost double the price of the FX3, and that doesn't mean you're going to get double the image quality. What you're buying in a cinema camera like the FX6 is that you're going to get a lot of convenience features that I already mentioned before. However, for the most part, a lot of people are going to do absolutely great work on the Sony FX3. And in fact, I'm going to put a couple of different creators that I find that are great with the Sony FX3 and you should watch their content and find out it's not really about the camera. It's just about what works for your workflow. Okay, so I'm going to have my little bit of a rant as to why some people invalidate the FX3 as a cinema camera. And a lot of things I'm going to talk about is just based on 2023 and how we use language nowadays. Now, my interpretation of what makes a cinema camera a cinema camera is a tool that is made with the intent to make movies. And it doesn't necessarily mean or directly dictate where those movies tend to end up. Now, I'm a little bit of an old man, and I used to remember the days where you can go to a gas station, you could find direct to gas station movies and films. They never made it to the big screen, they didn't even make it to television, they would get sold directly into some of these gas stations and sold for $4.99, and hopefully someone would buy it and have a good laugh at the end of the day. However, these movies were still films despite not meeting some sort of a standard that we as a society ended up making up. Some of those gas station movies still required a director or a director of photography were probably still shot on some high quality cameras and features with it. And to go and pick it up and say, this isn't a movie just because it's not on a certain type of screen that we want, isn't necessarily the most genuine thing in the world. 
Now in 2023, the way that we watch movies, the way that we consume content from a video standpoint is entirely different. We have things just like YouTube now where you can distribute your films and your movies and you're actually able to post your work onto a platform just like this that has the intention of being a film or being a movie or a storytelling piece with using video as the medium for it which generally means that you can still put movies onto this platform that's called YouTube, which also means that the tools that you use with the intention of doing so also can be called movie or video tools. A cinema camera. I, I think we take it a little bit too seriously in calling something that doesn't have every single thing that every single cinema camera does not a cinema camera. And at the end of the day, I think it's just a word to say, this camera is made to make videos has photography features, but for the most part, most people will use this to make high quality video with. And it's Netflix approved. So, I mean, it's a cinema camera now, right? Because everything that's Netflix approved is now the best camera in the world. I'm also just being facetious. But anyways, my general thing is, is that if you're using something with the intent of it being used and the thing and the person that made that thing also made it for that use, then a third party telling you that it's not that thing, I don't know. My thing, don't mess with it too much. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video or at the very least you learned something. And let me know, are you team Sony FX6 or team Sony FX3? Or what camera do you use? I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.